It's December 2016 and I wanted to do a state of the collection update regarding my watches. So I'm taking the time this morning to record a state of the collection video just showing off my albeit small watch collection. Just a little aside here, I am wearing these Carl F. Boucher watch gloves that I got at a watch event a few years back. I don't recall where I got it from, but it was at some events where they're giving away some free swag when we left and this was in the bag and it sat in a drawer unused. So I figure I'll break it out for a watch, watch show and tell video, so to speak. Anyway, I have this, these, I'm going to go left to right in no particular, I, I just laid them out in no particular order, but left to right seems logical as far as just going through these watches. Anyway. This first watch I have is the Swatch System 51 in black with the black leather strap. I have a review of this watch on my blog at OKFJ.net, photos and video on YouTube. So you can check out the information there. But this is a nice watch as far as engineering is concerned. It is a nice milestone piece in watch manufacturing. And while I don't wear it much, I think it's a nice smart watch as far as appearance. And it's very, um, I think it looks nice and modern and simple and it is attractive. Granted, it's plastic and I know a lot of people are very critical of this watch. Um, I've seen a lot of negative reviews on my YouTube video. But it is what it is. And I think if you're looking for a nice um, conversation piece that's not expensive, then the Swatch System 51 is definitely something that you can have in your collection. And that's why I have one in mind. Uh, next here is the Omega Seamaster 300 meter with the blue wave dial, reference number 2220.80.00. This was the last of the wave dials. Um, it has a 2500C movement in it. This was last seen, I think, in the Bond film with Daniel Craig, Casino Royale. He wore it in the second portion of the movie. But I love this watch, it's a great piece. Um, the design has been copied quite often by other manufacturers and I won't say their names. But I do like it. Um, I took it off the bracelet to mix it up and I now have it on a NATO strap. A lot of people don't like the bracelet on the 300 meter, but um, I personally do. But the reason why I took it off and put it on the NATO is just to give it some variation as far as appearances. If I wanna wear a nice watch in the summer, I'll just, quickly snag the Seamaster 300 meter on a NATO strap and it looks pretty good as far as just um, hot weather, wearing it with short sleeves, it looks really good. But I still have this in my collection um, and I do like it. So I also have photos and, on my blog at okabj.net if you wanna see it. <clears throat> Next I have the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra 41.5 millimeter with the blue teak dial. This is reference number 231.10.42.21.03.001. And yes, that's a mouthful. It's a nice three-hander with a date. That blue teak dial is absolutely beautiful. I think this is a great watch. Overall, I mean, this, this Aquaterra, I think, is arguably better than a Rolex Datejust in terms of looks. And the movement, I mean, is on par as far as robustness and and reputability and reliability. You got the open case back, so you can see the embellishments. Um, it's nice embellishments considering the um, cost of the watch. Granted, it's not a it's not a long it, but it's still a beautiful looking movement. That being said, my only complaint regarding this Seamaster Aquaterra is the fact that I wish I got the 38.5 millimeter. So that is my one regret. When I bought this watch, I went with the 41.5 because I thought it looks good on my wrist. I have seven inch wrists. It looked good at the time and with and the first year ownership, I thought it wore great. But over time, I realized that the watch is just too big on my wrist when it comes to dress, uh, dress shirts. So when I wear cufflinks, a shirt with cufflinks, this watch is, is very big as far as that is concerned, comparatively speaking. So while it wears great in most other scenarios, especially, you know, just casual wear, this watch is, is great, but I'd wish, uh, you know, often I wish I had the 38.5. So that is my one regret with this watch. I still love it. It's a beautiful watch, um, but I'd wish I gotten 38.5 millimeter uh, version of it. 
Moving on to the next watch, this is the Rolex GMT Master II, as you can see with the blue-black ceramic bezel. This is reference number 116710BLNR. This is a very coveted piece in the Rolex community. Um, the ceramic bezel is just beautiful. Um, it's still, the, this watch is still going uh, on the used market for a very high value. The retail price is still 8950 I think, US. Um, it, there's not much I can say about it that I have, hasn't already been said. Um, the GMT Master II is obviously a great Rolex watch. The movement is, is excellent. The, the complication is, is, is sound. It's a useful complication. Um, I have plenty of photos on my blog at okfj.net with a video review. Um, this is my everyday watch. I wear this all the time um, as far as the office is concerned. Uh, it fits great at 40 millimeters. I, I have nothing but high praise for this watch. If you're looking for a nice everyday watch that works well in the office and outside the office, definitely consider the GMT Master II. Um, I personally would go with the blue black. Moving on, I have this Blanc, Blanc Palm 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe, 43 millimeters. It's stainless steel case with the, the gray dial and the black sailcloth strap. This watch is absolutely beautiful. Even at 43, 43 millimeters, even though it's, it's very difficult to wear this with dress shirts, you can do it. It's just gonna look a little bit awkward on smaller wrists. But I do love this watch. I have plenty of photos and a video review online. So definitely check that out if you haven't seen it yet. Um, size aside, my only complaint with this is, well, let me go back. 43 millimeters is big. Uh, comparatively speaking, but for an active watch, since this is my weekend watch, I don't really care too much about it being bigger than my Rolex or you know this Omega Seamaster because it's still wearable. The thing is, um, the my my one complaint is the sailcloth strap is cracking after only a couple years of use. You can see it's just really tore up. Um, I, I've been holding off on the NATO strap. I was going to get the black or the OD green NATO strap, but out the door, that's going to be 800 bucks, I think, with the um, strap and the hardware. So I've been holding off, but now that the fact that this strap is kind of wore out, I'm either going to buy the strap, the NATO strap, or I'm just going to get a replacement bottom strap, sailcloth strap, since the top sailcloth is still fine. But a lot of people have inquired about the Blanc Pond, the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe. It is a beautiful watch. It's a great watch. It's a nice active watch. It's not an everyday watch. You can't just wear it with everything. Unfortunately, it's, if you have small wrists, it's not going to work because of the size. But this watch is just too great not to wear outside of the office. I think it's it's just a great watch. The size of the dial, I mean, that it's so... Very little script on it, so it looks clean. And the size in the combi in combination with that that beautiful gray dial with very little um, text, the uh, the markers are just perfect on it. I think this is a beautiful looking watch. I've actually beat this watch up a little bit. I've got a couple couple nicks on it because I've hit this watch against um, things, uh, in particularly this one gouge here. I got in Vegas at um, when I hit it against a steel chair um, a couple years back, but it is what it is. Now, as far as hard use is concerned, this GW, or the GW9400 3CR Rangeman in OD Green, this has been my, my beater watch when I'm at the range or if I'm doing active stuff, like working on the car or the truck, I will wear this and it's served me well for the past three years and I do appreciate this watch for what it is. I've got a review on my website and a video review on YouTube, so definitely check that out. But it is now being superseded by this G-Shock Mudmaster GWG 1000DC185 with the Desert Camo strap. I do love this strap and this watch. It's got all the features of the the range man into the Mudmaster, so it is a great active watch, I think, and it's going to be my my new active watch for the next few years until Casio comes out with something that might attract me even more. So, as far as my collection is concerned, I'm not sure if I'm going to 
buy another watch anytime soon. I love watches. Unfortunately, they're very expensive. I've been pondering before I got the when I was right when I got the Rolex GMT Master II, I was actually considering the JLC, the Jeje Le Coultre Master Ultra Thin Moon 39 millimeter, and I still need a dress watch because I don't have a true dress watch in my collection. So that might be my next one. Although if I can trade this, I really I'm mean, really considering trading this, or I can try to put this on the market. As far as trading this Aquaterra for the 38.5 millimeter version, I want the blue version, the blue dial but I want it just in 38.5. If I can do that, I may just do that and use that as my dress watch because the 40, this is a beautiful watch and I think this would work great for dress if it were smaller for me. So that's pretty much it. I'm, I've been pondering the Tudor Black Bay for a long time, but that one's 41 millimeters and that is thicker than most. I mean, it's thicker than the Submariner and it's thicker than the GMT Master II, so I'm not sure if I want that. I kind of, I'm, for my next, in the future, I'm going to stay close to the GMT Master II form factor as far as dimensions of the case. So I'm going to, it's, that's really going to dictate what my next watch is going to be. So I'm definitely going to stay at the 40 millimeter for my next watch if and when I do get my next watch. So that'll probably be something like the JLC, um, the most Master Ultra Thin Moon, 39 millimeter, or another watch in a 40 millimeter range. But that's it for my small collection. I'm probably going to post a photo, some photos and a written article just summarizing my state of the collection on my blog. And if I do that, I'll link to that in the video description. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to post questions or reach out to me on email or whatnot, and I can answer them as best I can. But that's it for my state of the collection, um, December 2016, for my watches. Thanks for watching.